Hey guys, we're back in the garage today and we are going to measure for and shim for the hydraulic throwout bearing cushion. This measurement allows for proper engagement and proper release throughout the life of your, your clutch. So it's important that you do it so you don't get slippage and it's important you do it as your, so that as your clutch wears, it continues to operate as it's supposed to. So you're probably asking yourself, why are we doing this? I'm gonna do my best to explain it the way I understand it. So essentially what this measurement is doing is we are setting the depth of this, which is the hydraulic throw up bearing or the slave cylinder. This particular slave cylinder is designed to rest against the fingers of the clutch. So in here, you can see the fingers of the clutch. It's made to ride against those. So what we're doing is setting the depth. So if we have too many shims, which means we bring it too far forward on the spline of the transmission, this spring will be compressed. And if it's compressed all the way, we're actually going to put pressure on those fingers as if we're pressing in the clutch pedal. What's gonna happen then is that we're gonna end up with five neutrals or we're gonna have a clutch that doesn't fully engage and it's gonna slip. The opposite of that, if we have it too far out, when we push the clutch pedal in, let's say it's riding here, when we push the clutch pedal in, it can only travel so far. And if we can't push this against those fingers to release the clutch, it'll never come out of gear. So basically we're setting the depth of this. You can see how the shims work on the transmission. We're setting the depth of this on the input shaft of the transmission so that the depth allows this to be not too far in and not too far back so that we're somewhere in, in the sweet spot of it being able to push in when we push the pedal and release when we release the pedals. Um, I read online that uh, it's about a half an inch throw uh, when you when you press in the pedal. So that's why we're setting this this motion. So. I envision this riding somewhere in here. We press on the pedal, it comes out to here. We release the pedal, it goes back in. And as the fingers wear, it's gonna get closer. So let's go ahead and do the calculations. We'll do the measurements and figure out how many of these shims that we are supposed to use. All right, some of you have heard me praise Silver Sport Transmissions before. This is their assembly instructions. Uh, let me just read this first line. The slave cylinder is designed to be compressed by more than one half inch by the pressure plate fingers when at rest. The slave cylinder needs a minimum of one eighth inch cushion beyond that to allow for clutch disc wear and expansion from heat. The acceptable range of the slave cylinder cushion is between one eighth inch, which is 0.125, and three eighths inch, which is 0.375. So let's go ahead and get our first measurement, which is the distance between the fingers of the clutch disc and or the pressure plate and the face of the bell housing. All right, based on this, and I'm just using this as a ruler, I've got it flush against the fingers of the clutch. And based on this, I'm getting what looks like, looks like three right here, three and nine thirty seconds. So let's write that down. All right, so our X measurements, X equals three and nine thirty seconds. Or if I use fractions, bear with me. I'm not using fractions. 9 divided by 32 equals 0.28125. So my X measurement becomes 3.28125. All right, let's go get Y. Next is the Y measurement. Essentially what we're doing is we're compressing that bearing as far as it'll go, and we're going to get a measurement from the face of the transmission to the face of the bearing. All right, like they did in the instructions, I'm going to use this square. I'm going to press it, keep this against the face of the transmission. I'm going to compress this spring to its fully compressed state. And we're going to get a measurement. Make sure that that's straight down there. All right, what do we have? We have, it looks like, 2 and... 13, 30 seconds. Let's go do the math. Hey guys, I have a secret. Come here, I'll share it with you. All right, I called Silver Sport. Yeah, I know, I called for help. The guys are great, so you know what? I like talking to them, maybe I'm just a little lonely. Um, but they, they, they shared something with me that I want to share with you. They make these all the time. They buy these from the same manufacturer. So they know what nominal tolerance is in this connection. So they also know when it's compressed, 
what the distance of this compressed face, so here, to the face of the transmission should be. And they shared that with me. I asked them, they said, hey, I'm having trouble with my measurements. I'm like, I'm between two and three shims. What do I do? I says, oh, well, let me help you. What are your measurements? So I shared what I got. And they said, oh, you know what? You're really close. You're almost spot on. So I had the two and 13, 30 seconds, right? The last video, part of the video. He said, when they measure, it is 2.402. And guess what two and 13, 30 seconds is? 2.406. It's pretty close, especially since I'm using a square and I'm not using a, you know, a caliper mic or whatnot. So if we use that 2.402 as this measurement, it's going to get us even closer, assuming that this is at nominal, than if we just measured it. But I know that my measurement's pretty good because, like I said, I'm 2.06. Don't tell anybody. They gave me a cheat code and I'm going to use it. So knowing Knowing what I knew with that cheat code, I knew that this measurement is now critical. I need to make sure that this is spot on. So again, I took my ruler, I took my square, I even got my calipers out. I stuck all kinds of things in this hole to make sure that it was right. And I'm pretty confident that we've got the right numbers. Again, let's go do the math. All right, I'm now equipped with my compressed distance and I'm gonna show you my math versus the cheat code. So my Y equals, Two and thirteen thirty seconds, which in decimal world, thirteen divided by thirty-two equals point four oh six two five. Point four oh six two five. Silver sports nominal was two point four oh two. So I'm going to do this math twice. Two five minus minus. Because remember the equation here is x minus y. So let's do the math. Three point two eight. Whoops. Three point two eight one two five minus two point Four zero six two five equals zero point eight seven five silver sport. And again, I remeasured this and measured this, and I got somewhere between three point two eight and three point three zero. So it only gets bigger. So three point two eight one two five minus two point four zero two equals. 0.87925. My shims are 0.25 inches each. So I need to be between an eighth inch, which is 0.125 inches, and three eighths of an inch, which is 0.375 inches. If I put two shims in there, I get 0 0.5. So I'm going to take up this gap. So 0 0.5 will be 0.375, which is right on the top end of that. And using their measurement, if I put two shims in there, minus, minus 0.5, I get point, I get 0.87925 minus 0.5 equals 0.37925, which this is a little bit out of spec. Remember our maximum is 0.375. It's just a hair too big. Again, this is on the large end. So if I do three shims, three times 0.25 equals 0.75. So now I'm going to take this number, 0 0.875, minus 0.75. And again, I'm going to do the silver sport calculation. So it's 0 0.87925 minus 0 0.75. What do I get? Equals 0.125, which is right at the bottom end. And if I use the silver sport numbers, minus 0.75 equals 
which again is between 0 0.125 and 0 0.375. Closer to this end, but these are right between. And again, I know that when I took my calipers out and I remeasured this, I got this as probably the shortest distance. It's probably closer to 3.3, which just makes this number larger, which then makes this gap larger, which again drives me to using three shims instead of two. Let's not trust our calculations. Let's go ahead and measure it. So I have two shims, three shims. Here's all three. Take this out, make sure that this goes in so it rides in that. Oh, should make sure that they're at least lined up, right? There's one shim, two shims. Three shims in the slave cylinder. Let's go ahead and get another measurement. All right, at this point, we're just going to double check our math uh, with actual distances now that we've got the shims. So let's go ahead and remeasure this with the shims in place. Again, I'm going to stick this on the face. I'm going to put this against the face of the transmission. I'm going to get this in nice and tight in its compressed state. There it is. I'm going to verify. That's tight. Pull this out and let's get my measurement. All right, what's that say? It looks like about three and five thirty seconds. Sorry, it's hard to see. All right, so going back to our original math, our original X measurement was put it up here so you can see it. X equals 3.28125. This new measurement is three and 530 seconds. So it's 3.15625. Subtract y from x equals 0.125, which is on the bottom end of our spec. So our new cushion, cushion, which is what started all this, equals 0 0.125, which is the minimum. All right, we're all set. Three shims it is. All right, let's uninstall the bell housing. Install the throwout bearing before you try to reinstall the bell housing. It's important that you do this step because if you don't, you have to take it back apart. Ask me how I know. This is just going to sit in here. So I can get this back together. All right. All right. Back together it goes. All right, attaching the bell housing to the back of the engine. I think they call it this flywheel housing bolt. I looked online too and um, on the Corvette forums and they said LS Motors is 37 foot pounds. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten her up to 37 foot pounds, get this bell housing on the engine. Ooh. All right, let's go one more time around the horn, starting with the top. One, two, three. Back around the top. Now for the fun part. We've got to get the transmission in here. We'll position this like so. And we'll get the transmission mostly in here. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Video's already getting long enough, so I'm going to cut it here. Keep an eye out for my next video where I actually put the transmission into the back of the bell housing, which is back here. And I'll explain why I probably shouldn't have used this plastic tool and should have used a metal one. So I'll get into that. Also, I bought a really cool tool um, to check my injectors. As you guys know, this whole channel started because injectors um, misfired and were stuck open and flooded one of my cylinders. I bought a tool to check those and clean those out. So stay tuned for that. As always, please like, subscribe. It will really help another guy out. And thanks for watching.